So, welcome to Riga Business uh, School podcast. My name is Elin Waldman. I'm Riga Business School professional MBA uh, alumna and with me today is uh, Raimond Zeps, Riga Business School professional MBA student and still yes, still a student. And uh, our today's uh, podcast topic is hobby business. Hi, Elena. Hi, Hello. Everyone. Yes, and uh, for all our today's listeners and viewers, feel free to uh, write questions uh, for us in chat and then at the end of the podcast we will uh, see what you have written and also answer to your questions. And uh, so, once upon a time, <laughs> those long days uh, when, uh, when we were still attending uh, where we were still attending university in person. When we started together and you want to make me feel bad that I'm still studying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And uh, our first subject together, I remember, was uh, statistics. One of my favorite ones, for sure. Mm. Yeah, well, for me, you know, I have to admit that I think that this was the hardest subject for me. But um, actually, what made it really wonderful was that we had, I think, that we had a really great experience with a very nice group. Definitely. I would say that I think statistics is a good way to start at LBS because we had uh, a lot of those meetings, that our group meetings, which yeah. uh, allowed us to bond together. And I, I think it was a pretty strong group throughout the, the course. Well, I mean, eventually everyone graduated one by one and some, some, some are yet to. Well, I still have my last class, so uh, hopefully I managed to do it uh, very quickly as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, yeah, I remember statistics uh, very well, even though it was a longer time ago and it was... Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think I remember it because it was the first class. I think I remember just because uh, it really took time to to get along with the with the class and uh, and uh, all those uh, group cases and uh, all the working together trying to figure out the the best way the best solutions uh, that definitely was a lot of fun. Mm. Yeah, that actually was I think that was the only subject where we actually met outside uh, the classes to see each other and to teach each other uh, the subject. Yeah. Feels weird, right? Now saying that after two years of uh, all the restrictions that are taking place in the world right now, but uh, uh, yeah, that was a funny part as well. Like one person would understand a specific thing better than the other ones, and like mm -hmm. that person would teach it to the to the other students rather than uh, us actually learning from Andres, which we still did. But I mean, yeah. we still uh, we still uh, still spend those uh, additional hours. But I mean. Uh, pff, I, I remember the the final exam. I was kind of worried how it was going to go and uh, and stuff, but I, I did mm. really I did really well, uh, amazingly well, I would say. Mm. So uh, yeah. I have only good memories from it. Mm. So at the end, teamwork pays off, and uh, and we have again nice contacts from uh, from this first uh, first subject. I think yeah. I, 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 for professors here are, uh, are are telling us all the time that it's a, te a teamwork, teamwork. So they are putting mm -hmm. us in groups in every single class, and I think that again, going back to statistics, that kind of bonded us already from the first class, and now mm -hmm. we already got sort of the impression how it's going to be going forwards, and it was just easier starting from then. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. The hardest part is the first, and then and then uh, every everything becomes easier. And I was I was going to make a fancy introduction about you, <laughs> but uh, you know then I decided that I will be lazy and uh, let you introduce yourself. Throwing under the bus, yeah. classy. Throwing <laughs> under the bus. So tell me, who who is Raymond? Well, um, I'm uh, uh, currently I'm uh, working in uh, media. Uh, at uh, TV3 Group, uh, uh, the management at TV3 Group, it, uh, like if we are looking uh, sort of officially, then my headline says I'm head of uh, partnerships, uh, which is B2B and sports. But uh, uh, in reality, I think uh, first I would have to sort of uh, give a quick introduction to what TV3 Group is, because for a lot of people, it kind of is TV3 channel, like just linear channel, and 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 that's it. But in 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 reality. It, uh, we are the leading media house in the Baltics. We are quite large operations. If uh, you look at uh, if you look at it from uh, all the angles, and uh, 
uh, sure, there's the linear channels, TV3, TV6, there's mm -hmm. uh, radio stations in Latvia, it's uh, Star FM, it's, uh, it's, uh, um, uh, it's also, I mean, other radio stations in different countries. It's uh, wh wherever you look, it's the leading positions uh, in, in that uh, field. But it's also, it's also a lot of business to business uh, interaction. It, uh, it's channels, it's rights distribution, rights acquisitions. Uh, there's even, I mean, if you look at TV3 Group as uh, the ecosystem as a whole, it's also it's satellite service, uh, it's uh, cable uh, service uh, within the group. So. Uh, there's digital agency. I mean, there's uh, there, there's a lot of uh, things happening. So it's I would say it's all around 360 uh, media group that um, uh, takes a lot of uh, uh, a lot of different uh, angles uh, to, to to working life. And uh, uh, I think uh, it's also a quite interesting area for the reason that it's changing. Uh, media yeah. now is. Uh, I mean, it has been. Uh, elevating the whole time but uh, now during the past i don't know five to ten years it's quite rapidly changing because uh, the way we consume media is pretty much changing with social media being in very strong positions right now with uh, with uh, these ott platforms coming in instead of uh, linear channel which is the way we consumed uh, content like entertainment content or, or news entertainment content previously so uh, it's fun to be there, and my, my job duties are, uh, well, managing a part of it. Uh, yeah. At the same time, uh, the, 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 the management position also involves you uh, maybe not making decisions, but also giving your input in, in all areas of, uh, of the uh, activities take, uh, taking place. So that's pretty much my core headline uh, who I am and uh, and what I do but uh, additionally to that I guess uh, the I guess the thing that I'm probably better known of for a specific audience which is, which is uh, a sports audience is my involvement in sports uh, initially uh, I started in sports uh, management sports marketing and uh, some of the <laughs> bits have been uh, with me since uh, uh, since the early beginnings uh, of my professional career, still uh, managing uh, athletes and uh, consult consultations and uh, that kind of that yeah. kind of input. Actually, when I googled you, it seems that you have been involved with like all kinds of sports. So how how did you even end up being so so involved in in sports? Uh, I used to uh, do sports myself. I used mm. to play basketball. Um, that was uh, growing up, so obviously there's the love for sports and uh, the understanding of uh, what it is. And uh, uh, luckily, luckily for me, because I, I mean, like for I guess for most of people, uh, not for all, but for most people, after finishing high school, it's like well, what to do, like even mm. where to study, what what what, to, what challenges to take on. And uh, for me, it was quite similar. I sort of knew approximately what I wanted to do, but at the same time, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So. Mm. Uh, so for me, uh, getting a chance uh, through being in sports and actually, I guess, uh, being in the right place at the right time, uh, got a very entry-level job in, in sports management. Uh, I still remember my first salary being 200 lats a month. Mm. That was my starting point. Uh, uh, but uh, but uh, yeah, then it started uh, the process of proving myself to sort of climb uh, the ladder of uh, professional career. and. Um, uh, from from my first uh, uh, first job, which was really a project, uh, I got to work for the Latvian Basketball Association, uh, and and then from there on, uh, as I said, it's been pretty much mm -hmm. uh, with me at some parts as my like main job, at some parts as my hobby job, but uh, it's been with me the whole time. Okay. Okay. And uh, I also saw that you have been living abroad for for some time. Uh, yeah, I was uh, work related. Uh, actually, I uh, left Latvia uh, for the first time when I was uh, 23. Uh, and uh, well, it's it's hard to imagine it now because uh, you have all the communication tools available: WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Uh, but back then it was uh, it was quite different. I had my BlackBerry, which which had a chat function back then, which was something uh, innovational. Like well, I don't think WhatsApp was existent, or maybe it was, but it was just in, just wasn't used, and, and and data plans were not as 
uh, as they are right now. So I went to Kazakhstan to uh, now it's called uh, called Nur Sultan, the capital city, but uh, back then it was called Astana. And I spent a year working for um, uh, Baris uh, uh, Continental Hockey League uh, mm. uh, team, which is still still playing in the same league as Dinamo Riga. And uh, I went to work there for marketing uh, to run the daily life of uh, marketing division, mm. uh, consult the management there. And uh, I mean, when you're uh, that age, you think that you know everything. <laughs> That you have uh, pretty much answers uh, answers to all of the questions, but now looking back, obviously I didn't know f uh, a lot. Let's put it this way: not to use uh, fall language, but uh, um, uh, it was a pretty cool learning experience. And uh, the fact that you were there simply put alone. I mean, uh, the uh, the the. Uh, environment there was uh, for me to do the job was uh, qu quite cool i mean it's everything uh, the, the the living the working and and, and all of the stuff but uh, uh, when you when you're from somewhere else there's a lot of pressure on you there's a lot of uh, hope on you as well mm. um, so it kind of uh, it kind of makes you uh, want to work more and more and more and I think that also while it uh, actually gave me a lot of uh, necessary things in my in my f uh, further career advancement uh, it also uh, taught me one thing that I'm still struggling with which is working non-stop uh, <laughs> late hours uh, and, uh, and I just working the whole time because again it was like pressure and hope at the same time so you don't want to let anyone down you don't want to do more and more and more and more, more and you feel like it's never enough. So uh, Saturday, Sunday. It's a good thing I didn't really have any uh, other things to do there. So going to movie theater alone was my my uh, fun uh, fun thing to do uh, on on the weekends. And at one point you've seen all of the movies. So again, what else do you do? You just you just work. Mm. Okay, okay. So I'm hearing that a huge part of your li life is consisting from work. But who is Raymond's behind all those professional titles? Student. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we know. Uh, uh, I've, uh, I mean, I love studying, honestly, and that's why I started. It's my second master's. Uh, the first one uh, started in uh, London School of Business and Finance. And um, uh, then, actually, uh, I, I was a lecturer at the university myself. Uh, uh, for bachelor students, for second year bachelor students in marketing, which was a lot of fun. But uh, after a while, I understood that I, I want to go back to being student myself, mm. which is when I enrolled uh, in the Riga Business School. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's uh, still some other things on side. I'm learning Spanish. I'm um, trying to educate myself uh, throughout the way. So uh, I would say student mm. second. And, uh, and then it's the, the usual things that mm. others are. I mean, I have my hobbies. I have my my friends, my life, so. Mm. Okay, so this is this is why you're studying so long, right? Because you liked like being a student. No, nah, no, nah, I would I would uh, probably be happy to have been uh, to have finished by now. But uh, uh, first of all, I had to wait for a year for my last class because it was just not available. Uh, so uh, bad uh, class picking from my side. But uh, but also. Um, with with the, all of the things, uh, work-related things, uh, it's not always easy to have two classes in the same semester or even to have mm. one sometimes. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to do my best, but uh, uh, there, there's a good feeling when you have the last class, you're really enjoying it. it it's the same feeling that you have for the first ones when you when you get back uh, being a student and uh, and it comes back to you when, when you're at mm. your last class. So I'm really enjoying it right now. Yeah. Okay. And... Um as we were chatting before this uh, this podcast about the topic and uh, decided about the uh, hobby business uh, topic for today. And uh, as I understand that you have always uh, pursued some, some sort of hobby business while also uh, being in a corporate career. Yeah, I think it came from actually me willing to step up the corporate ladder. Uh, mm. That's how it started. Uh, I always, um, well, at the beginning I felt the need to uh, 
to figure out how to stand out from the crowd, sort of uh, to have more experience. I mean, when you just start, you know, that's the only thing you write in your resume, right? The, mm. the first positions that you're having. And I always felt that I need something X or something X or so. Uh, at first, I was looking uh, myself for projects uh, that I could enroll into. And, and, and luckily, when you look, you can definitely find ones. Uh, there's always helping uh, hand, hands needed. And uh, I took... I took advantage of it and that's how it, it kind of started and it has been with me since the beginning of my professional career that I've always wanted to do more uh, and, and then at one point like I was just picking up every opportunity that I was getting. Um, I was uh, overloaded at, uh, at points and probably I still am uh, but now I'm being more picky in what I actually want to do. There's some long term things like uh, managing a professional athlete for more than 10 years is obviously something that uh, also takes uh, time but even then I'm, I'm, I'm um, constantly open to uh, helping and when, when, when something really interesting uh, knocks at your door and um, you, you just have the feeling you, you want to do it and, uh, and, and you think about uh, when you will you find time for it or uh, whether you can actually afford to do it in, I mean time wise uh, that's secondary question you, you think about it only when you have said yes already because <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, it, it has uh, been proven in my life uh, for many times. The more you do, the more opportunities you get, mm. and then you have to slow yourself down. You have to pace yourself, basically. But mm. uh, uh, that hobby business, uh, well, we, we, we kind of worded it that way, but it's uh, always like something additional mm. that I've been doing in my, to my corporate life. But, but then again, as I said, it started by me willing to climb the corporate ladder faster and um, I think at, uh, at some point it still is. I mean, when you are even presenting yourself to someone, you kind of want that X factor, right? And uh, I, I think uh, that X factor, uh, X factor is given when I'm actually talking about uh, those things that I'm doing on a side rather than uh, my, my daily life to, to whoever I'm talking to at that point. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how do you actually manage and how do you recharge from from all that you are doing because as as we spoke before it sounds like really a lot well i recently calculated that over the past seven and a half years i've had literally one week of uh, vacation <laughs> so uh you have at least uh, i mean if you look at average you will get what 20 business days off uh, a year so mm. uh th those are my 20 business days uh, a year not being off um but also, um, uh, I mean, again, the more you do, the more time somehow shows up. And uh, it kind of maybe sounds ridiculous, sounds Ill irrational, but uh, it, has, uh, it has proven to me many times over. Yes, there are Saturdays, there are Sundays when my friends are going to, I don't know, movie theater uh, or, or, or doing some other fun activities and I'm sitting at home trying to f uh, catch up on a deadline. Uh, it's obviously, uh, well, uh, at that point uh, you start rethinking whether your decisions have been right. But, uh, but then again, everything comes and goes. And as I said, when, when something exciting and currently I'm really uh, choosing what I uh, enroll into and when something exciting comes, you just can't say no to it because you, li you, like, it as a, you like it as an idea, you like it as a thing you could be involved in. Mm. Okay. And what gives you the most fulfillment from, from all that you do? Uh, it's a philosophical question. I mean... Uh, would keep philosophers busy for a while, right? Uh, uh, I think uh, I think we are all striving for something, and at the end of the day, it's most likely the inner peace, right? And in the inner peace, it consists of different things. You have you have your uh, your wishes on 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 I don't know personal life. Those can be wishes. You never know when you're going to meet the right person, or when you're going to do some other things. And then you have uh, your goals on, on, on professional life and all of those, they contribute to that inner peace. So I think I'm also somewhere striving to get that feeling of inner peace. Most likely uh, it will take a lifetime to, to get there and hopefully, hopefully to get there. But I think for me, it's, uh, it's just a drive that started with my professional career. And it's hard to slow down because when, when you're slowing down, you feel like you're not really 
doing uh, everything uh, to the extent that you could and uh, even though it should be enough like just looking no emotions attached but um, but to me the drive it just comes naturally and I think I've probably broken myself in some one way or another where, uh, where it's never enough but uh, uh, yeah it's definitely philosophical and uh, maybe it's even good that I haven't thought about it too much because it <laughs> would probably give me some headache or two. Okay, but, but I hear that motivation is given to you by that excitement and drive and all the interesting projects and, uh, and all those things that N you're Now taking. yes, now yes, but as I said at the beginning it was just my, my, my drive to force my corporate career so to make mm -hmm. me stand out, to make me more appealing or more interesting to the potential uh, employer. Mm. Okay. And in this, um, in this process of combining corporate career and those projects and hobby businesses, what's your biggest, let's say, mistake or shall I call it learning uh, from, from all this? Well, you need to pace yourself. Uh, uh, I, um, <laughs> uh, I, I remember it was, I don't know how many years ago, uh, it was uh, uh, when Myers Briedis, uh, th uh, three time old uh, boxing champion, which I've been managing for more than 10 years, when, when he was. Uh, at the let's say at the first steps, not the first steps, but somewhere in the middle of his career, was still, well, when he was still advancing. I remember, um, uh, like, the, it was doing everything, uh, even I mean, like, uh, just on a lone basis, uh, creating events with uh, with sold out arenas, uh, not the biggest ones back then, but still like uh, uh, we did events in Liepāja, which. Uh, I had I, I don't remember exactly somewhere below four thousand uh, people. It's a three thousand seat arena, so you have some something else, uh, some additional people uh, sitting on the floor level. So so it was three eight thirty eight hundred thirty seven hundred. I don't remember exactly. Mm. It doesn't matter that much. Uh, and 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 you pretty much you you have full control of that event. You're you're pretty much doing it on your own, and that took like lots and lots and lots of hours and lots of stress. And uh, in the meantime, you have your daily job, which you still have to perform in. So people are expecting you to perform and nobody is giving you... Uh, my problem was that I didn't take time off. So nobody was giving you time off. And um, I remember that time I, I did not pace myself at all. I was uh, waking up at 6 a.m., going to bed at uh, 2 or 3 a.m., literally sleeping three, four hours a day. And I eventually I landed in a hospital. Yeah. Uh, with, but uh, I mean, I spent there, I think, seven or eight days uh, sleeping. Uh, I just couldn't get my body temperature down to, to normality. Um, so what the doctors told me is just that I'm empty, like my, 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 my uh, gas tank is empty. So spending uh, those, those days uh, in the hospital made me think a little bit that, yeah, I, I actually need to pace myself. So I just actually started approaching uh, things smarter, started to plan. And I think that's one of the things, like, if there's a learning lesson to be taken from which I took, then uh, it would be trying to, um, trying to manage your time. And mm -hmm. I'm still struggling sometimes with it, but uh, when you start managing it, when you are delegating some things that you actually know that it's taking a lot of time and someone else can do it and you don't have to be on top of it, uh, that helps. Mm. Okay, okay. And, and what are some, some of your, I don't know, productivity or time management, other tips or tricks? Um, no, I'm the worst person to ask, so... <laughs> so no, uh, well, I mean... Uh, some things, some super simple things help me, uh, like just writing all the things that uh, has to be done on paper and then assigning levels to them and then just mm -hmm. putting them out one by one. That okay. kind of helps when, when you're really overloaded. Like when you, 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 you feel overwhelmed, that helps. But normally it's just the, the, probably the regular things that other, peop other people do as well. Mm. Okay. And are you using some digital tools or technologies or something like? I've tried. I've tried. Uh, um, especially there's, um, 
there's one, uh, let's call it lifestyle business that I'm uh, launching with a friend of mine, uh, which uh, hopefully will take off in uh, in the nearest future. We want to be in the market uh, until the beginning of the summer. And uh, we at one point we understood that uh, even though there's only two of us and we can be on, on, on phone the whole time, but then again, both of us have uh, other things to, to think about, to worry about. So we need some management tools. So mm. we started using one specific one. Uh, it helps, yeah, it helps when you can, um, th those things that are available there, like at first you think that now it's just, just listing tasks and then uh, sort of uh, circling them out, but uh, th then when you actually start doing the things, you see that they have thought about everything, There's, I mean, it's already in place, like adding comments, adding questions to the other party, like mm -hmm. uh, all of that uh, is thought of, so it's, a, it's a definitely a good tool to mm -hmm. take advantage of. Okay, okay. And uh, what advice would you give to somebody who would, for example, who would like to do both this corporate career and those projects and side hustles, businesses and, and all together, besides pacing, because I hear that this is a big lesson for you, but, but what mm -hmm. other advice would you give? No, I would say go for it. I mean, um, just make sure that it uh, you don't... Um, well, that pacing is important because uh, you have to make sure that uh, uh, you are 100% at all of the things that you are doing. So if you're running out of hours, then you probably have to drop something. Mm. Uh, nobody's uh, going to be looking at you and saying like, oh, yes, but he's doing that thing on the side or he's doing that other thing. So I shouldn't be asking for a result. Uh, I mean, it's never going to be the case. Everyone's going to be asking 110% from you. So just keep that in mind. But then again, uh, once you start doing those things, mm -hmm. uh, those extra things, you see that you ha can find time for them. If you get excited about those things, then it's not going to be a problem at all for you doing something extra. That uh, one movie theater uh, date with your friends or, or that one uh, restaurant uh, evening uh, will, will uh, cancel itself easily when you actually get excited about uh, doing something and working on something. And the end result, that that is the thing that... Uh, um, well, that floats my boat. I mean, that's the thing that gets me excited, as I said, and uh, w when you get there, it's no better feeling. Okay. Okay. And uh, as here in RBS, a very, uh, very big emphasis is on leadership. We have several subjects on leadership, and, and leadership is a big topic. And Hi, Greg. Yeah, hi Greg. And uh, what does uh, leadership mean to you? Um, I think it's setting a good example. Uh, like, I've thought about it because it's a question that comes up here in uh, RBS uh, regularly, like the difference between uh, a, a leader and uh, a good manager, uh, yes. I would oppose. Uh, so. I, You're I, stealing my next question, but okay, continue. Okay, <laughs> well, uh, um, I would say that um, a good leader is probably uh, not specifically a good manager, but uh, a leader is one that keeps everyone thriving for results. Uh, it, it is the person that pushes everyone forwards, while a good manager just have to keep everyone in check. That's kind of my um, um, my understanding of it, but like uh, um, yeah, a leader. I mean, we, we, we can look at uh, the, the the best leaders in the world, like Steve Jobs and and, and and others. I mean, they have this drive that drives other together with them. So they are more like an emotional leader. But then uh, a good manager, uh, he has to keep everyone in balance. He has to keep everyone in check. I mean, delegating, trusting 100%, but then again, uh, he has to take care of the result. I think leader will not always do that. So uh, he might look at some things uh, very much differently than a manager would, because manager would want everything intact. Mm -hmm. Leader would want everyone striving for their best. Mm -hmm. And how this plays out in, in, your, in your life? I think um, I uh, well, I think I'm still 
struggling to find the the approach. Sometimes I feel like uh, coming up with these uh, with these ideas. I mean, in my in my daily job, just uh, coming up with maybe uh, crazy at first, or or um, or just ideas that are taking. Uh, um, a lot of got to to implement them, uh, and and uh, I'm when I get excited uh, about them, I, I stand completely behind them, and uh, I, I try to push the narrative. I try to push the management team uh, to 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 get behind me as well, like to sign off on it. And uh, um, at some times, I well, I mean, there's just uh, regular duties that you have to fulfill as well, so you have tasks uh, that eventually lead you to filling your KPIs, right? So mm -hmm. you have to keep intact uh, everyone that is uh, helping you to do them as well. So I think I'm still, I haven't found it. I mean, I was hoping I, <laughs> Riga Business School would help me find it, but, uh, but uh, well, life's a lesson, so I, I just keep learning. Okay. Okay. And um, so do we have some... Uh, Questions? Yes. Okay, so while we are looking for while we are looking for questions, so oh yeah, so here's here is the question. Uh, as as you can see about how your uh, how your teamwork with Myers Breeds could be described. Oh, uh, it has uh, uh, changed definitely changed uh, over the time. Uh, when as I said, when when we we've been together for more than ten years. I mean, it obviously creates a, a relationship that is a, a strong bond, and it's not just a working relationship anymore. Uh, at first, it was uh, like a one-man orchestra doing everything, literally running uh, places uh, and, and and doing every single thing possible. And then uh, again, um, I mean, we are both living separate lives, right? So uh, we we have to take care of uh, our own lives as well. And uh, and for me, it's um, it's my my career as well. So. Uh, it's not smart, first of all, to to, to do everything. Uh, and I would say at first it was, uh, it was probably, I mean, it was a good learning curve as well. Uh, we we started from nothing. I mean, the, the, it wasn't like there was a lot of options uh, to go any other direction at first as well. We started from uh, zero money, zero recognition, um, zero, I, I can't say zero, but like uh, almost non-existent interest into, into that specific sport in the country uh, at all. So now thinking about it uh, from today's perspective, from today's position, it, it kind of probably doesn't feel that way. I mean, it, it feels like everyone knows him, everyone knows what is boxing, everyone knows things but uh, back then it was uh, that was me begging uh, calling every single media outlet uh, at points uh, begging for them to put an article up about his six seven eighth fight about his uh, victory staying up when he's fighting in in, uh, in New York staying up at night uh, uh, getting in touch with him on phone writing a press release sending it out so it, it was as I said it was a lot of things uh, and uh, and then uh, I mean, obviously, the the, the team grows. At uh, at one point, uh, there was uh, like I think nine people in the team already. Mm. So the team grows, and uh, the responsibilities. The, uh, obviously, there's more responsibility as well, but it also sort of get delegated. And then uh, for some things that uh, I literally uh, have uh, no time, or uh, pretty much. Um, I'd say I've exhausted myself uh, as well. I mean, it's a reality. Uh, and those things are, uh, are covered by other people. So for me, currently, it's more like taking care that nobody is... Like if we put it in a big picture, just uh, looking out after him, making sure that nobody's screwing him, uh, uh, covering all the legal 
financials um, that, that I mean uh, talks with uh, possible opponents with their teams promotions uh, management uh, so it's kind of uh, adjusted to the to the place where it's uh, strictly uh, taking care of the business part of being an athlete okay okay and how how actually your partnership started back then when when there was zero <laughs> everything how, how how did it it was uh, again doing something and uh, opportunities coming up but that was not definitely an opportunity i was thinking about or ever, would ever have uh, thought about it was um, uh, i was doing um, uh, a uh, an event a sporting event with uh, uh, with uh, with my back then partners, we were. Uh, it was the time when ice hockey was uh, when Dinamo was having their best seasons, and when KHL had such, just started. I had just returned from Kazakhstan, and it was uh, it was the yeah exciting time, which uh, w w which pretty much meant that uh, anything you do with ice hockey <laughs> it has a huge follower base. Uh, not just in Latvia, it was the same in Russia, same in. In Scandinavia back then, I mean, Keja was just born and was uh, investing uh, tons of money in the league. And uh, we decided to do, uh, uh, so back then ice hockey players were also fighting. Uh, it was more allowed than it is now. And we decided to take all the sort of bad guys from the from the leading leagues like NHL, Swedish League, KHL, who else? We had Czech League and, um, and uh, we decided to put them in a boxing ring sort of like uh, to find out which one is the, like the toughest of all the enforcers. And, and then we needed to feel a break there in the, in the event. And uh, the event was actually quite successful. We, it was uh, meant uh, to be sold on TV, right? So we sold it to, uh, to US, to ESPN, to Scandinavia, to Russia, so to, to leading providers. As I said, ice hockey was booming back then. And then... Um, we were thinking what to do because we had like semi-finals and then we had to fi figure out what to do before the final and someone came up with an idea let's put a real boxer in and obviously our knowledge about boxing was that we knew who was Muhammad Ali and we, we had seen some Mike Tyson fights and uh, that's how it started like um, someone suggested that hey there's a European champion in kickboxing who's switching to boxing so it was the very <laughs> beginning of my career and uh, uh, we did the fight found a sponsor for him for the, to, to actually be able to organize that fight uh, put it together and uh, after that it kind of mm. enrolled to now more than 10 years later. Okay, okay. well really as you say from one opportunity comes comes another and if you're ex excited in what you do then then success follows. Definitely, mm. definitely. Okay, and uh, so as you are already soon to the finish uh, to, to your RBS studies and the time of master thesis is uh, coming soon. Huh. True. Yeah. So, what are you going to write about? Well, I am not sure I can say it out loud because <laughs> I don't know whether it qualifies as cheating. But uh, <laughs> I've uh, started. Uh, I've started uh, writing a book. Well, currently in a phase where I'm uh, just uh, gathering all the materials and uh, trying to put them in some kind of an order. But uh, it's about the. Uh, it's about the changing life of uh, sports business. Um, uh, it, it obviously uh, will change rapidly in the next five to ten years, rapidly from what we know. It, 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 there's a lot of reasons behind it. The, finance, the financing will change. The, uh, the way we consume sports is much different. I mean, the, the average uh, viewer of uh, sports is just getting older and older, and uh, you have to somehow get the young generation, because it's always been there. I mean, it's the, younger gen the older generation getting the younger generation uh, to follow sports, and then, I mean, it's just, uh, a circle of life. And uh, now the younger generation is uh, with the... Well, you can't get uh, them to sit down uh, by TV and watch sports for two hours non-stop, which is something that uh, we and people older than us are used to doing. Um, so uh, the consumption of sports will rapidly change. Uh, that will come together with financial models. And then uh, in the book, uh, together with, uh, with some other leading experts or rather uh, leading managers of sports, um, uh, sports uh, community, which is uh, which are uh, leading uh, executives from from uh, leading sports leagues, from uh, from uh, media rights agencies, uh, from uh, from sports uh, management and marketing agencies. 
which uh, luckily I have access to. Uh, I'm kind of putting together that one common thought, or maybe not common, we'll see what, what it ends up being, uh, but, but basically a picture of uh, what has to be done, how it will change, how it will impact sports life, how it will impact uh, finances, uh, and, uh, and uh, what are the predictions of uh, sports business uh, 10 years from now, five, or ten, five to 10 years from now. So my master's thesis is kind of what I want to, uh, want to have from sort of uh, my investigation into a sports uh, management change also uh, implemented in my master's thesis like uh, i want to talk about the changing uh, business structure of sports and uh, uh, how uh, it will have to adapt otherwise it will die simple as that okay so we have a question will the book be in english yeah, the book will be in English. Uh, uh, this uh, actually, once I started going out to uh, those different people uh, in the industry, it uh, uh, some of the le some of the agencies that are world leading sports agencies uh, they kind of offered even help to publish it. Uh, so I mm. definitely will write it in English, and uh, we'll see how it, how it ends up. I mean. There's uh, some benefits to it as well. Uh, public opinion research is available worldwide, data available, and uh, and, and that kind of stuff, which would uh, should make it only more appealing and richer. But uh, well, we'll we'll see. We'll see. No, it definitely will be in English, only in English. But uh, yeah, we'll see how it end up. How it ends up. Okay. Okay. Well, hope that this book will predict the future. Uh, and then be left like as a as a past uh, uh, as a history uh, piece for the history with the future prediction. Oh, that's loud. <laughs> I'm not sure whether I have these anti anticipation, uh, but well, we'll see. Mm. Okay, and um, as we soon have to conclude, so. What would you say to somebody who is considering whether to study in RBS or no? I would say definitely yes. Um, I've enjoyed every single minute uh, that I'm here. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm super supporter of uh, RBS. Uh, whenever I'm uh, being asked to participate in any activities, I'm I'm always the first one to say yes for sure. Uh, I I've met so many great people here, uh, uh, different classes. Uh, uh, the, fa the fact that uh, every single um, class comes with a with a different surrounding, meaning that there's different people in every single class. It also is uh, great for uh, new connections, and uh, it's not like like I, I think the first. Uh, Perception is that you can build uh, your business connections here, but uh, I think it's just uh, you get to know great people. Uh, whether uh, you're going to do something together uh, somewhere down the road, you never know. I mean, but it's just uh, meeting great people and uh, and uh, I don't know, maybe um, uh, yeah. From well, I'm in the last class, so there's probably not going to be too many new connections. But uh, uh, but uh, but then again. Um, I've enjoyed every single minute. That's pretty much uh, uh, the fact. And uh, what I like about here is that uh, it's not uh, it's not just knowledge that is given to you. Uh, the most important, I guess, is the experience. And that's why I really appreciate the professors that they come. They they are hands-on professors on the topic uh, that uh, they represent, and they can give you the thing that is written in between the lines. And I think that is the most important because. Again, you go to bachelor's to study theory. <laughs> if you go to masters, uh, then uh, you, you don't want to you don't want to learn the same things that you already learned. You want to you want to get your hands on, and you want to get a real life uh, expertise. You want to get a real life uh, 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 practice methods uh, that are working, that have been proven to work, or maybe that didn't work but are a good lesson. And I've gotten tons of uh, tons of those here. Okay, so. Is there something else you would like to say to our listeners and viewers as we finish our today's conversation? Well, I've watched one of the Bottom Line Studios podcasts thus far, so uh, I think uh, I'll, I'll watch the next one and uh, that could be my suggestion. Keep following the things that RBS are doing also outside of the class. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool that uh, 
uh, there uh, there is a way to get to know your classmates or other student fellows. Mm. Okay. Well, thank you, thank you, Raymonds, uh, for today's uh, conversation, and uh, many thanks to all our listeners and viewers. And the next episode will be on the seventeenth February, hosted by Riga Business School faculty member Greg Mathers and guest Ilo Tolats, member of the board of Resource Center for Women, uh, Marta. So, see you in next episode. Thank you, bye.